but I will. I will chase you forever and a day. I promise. And then that was the end of my vision. <laughs> so we're cooking up the the fudge. You can see it's starting to melt. It's pretty important that you remember to stir it really often, especially once it starts to boil because you don't want it to burn on the bottom because that tastes pretty nasty. Here we go. So as you can see, the fudge is just beginning to boil. And so right about here is when I usually set the timer. So Isaiah, would you like to set the timer? Spin it around until five. Yeah, bring it all the way around to the 60. So, so it'll make a nice loud ding, ding, ding when we get ready. And then bring it back, all the way back. Yeah. You can use the timer on your phone, of course. Yep, just like that. But I'm an old fashioned girl. I like to use an egg timer. <laughs> So, uh, I thought I'd answer a couple of questions for you about heaven while, while we were cooking here. Um, several people have asked me, why is it that you get to go to heaven? And I don't have a lot of reasons, honestly, except for I did ask the Lord. I figured uh, heaven is my home. I ought to be able to go there, just like I go visit my parents at their home. Um, so... But then after I had the experience with the kids, people started asking me, well, why does Isaiah get to go to heaven? You know, why, why, does, why do children get to go to heaven? And um, children are really easy to take to heaven. And I think the reason is a, co a couple of reasons. First of all, I believe it's because their imagination is so vivid. You know, as adults, it's like we spend our life shutting down our own imagination, you know? Quit daydreaming, pay attention, what are you doing? You're living in a imaginary world kind of, you know, people say that to you all the time and it just shuts down your imagination. And then secondly, children's imaginations are pure. I think that, um, I think that they don't think vicious thoughts. They don't imagine murdering or having sex with somebody or, you know, just all the, crap that a lot of adults spend their time thinking about. They don't think about how bad they are as a person. You know, they just spend their time imagining when they grow up that they're going to be Superman. <laughs> you know, that they're going to be amazing. They're going to be the first president, first lady president, whatever. And I think that what you put into your imagination is really, really important. And, um, you know, if you look in the Bible, Jesus said that Whoever looks on a woman and lusts after her, he's committed adultery already. And whoever looks at his brother and um, calls him Raka, I think it was, has committed murder. You know, if you hate your brother, you've committed murder in your heart. And it, and so it must be that, that we bring something back from our imagination. You know, that's why it's important that we take every thought captive. Every thought that comes into our head doesn't have the right to stay. And uh, as for me, I, I'm i pretty tenacious about making sure that I don't let any thought stay in my head that God doesn't think in his head. You know, if I have a nasty thought about somebody or a judgmental thought or something like that, I like, no, no, I am not keeping that thought in my head and I am certainly not gonna play out that imagination. If I have thoughts of fear or failure, I'm like, no, God has ordained me to victory. And I think as we keep our imaginations pure, it's much easier to use them to go to heaven. The Bible says that once we've been born again, that we have sanctified imaginations. And so, if you just wanna close your eyes for a minute, I'll just lead you in a little exercise like I do with the kids. Just close your eyes and let's imagine that we are laying in the grass 
beside this really still brook and your hand can just kind of lay in the water and feel the coolness of the water and the coolness of the grass and the breeze. And then let's imagine Jesus just sitting right there beside us or laying beside us. And imagine Jesus saying, I love you. And I'm so glad you're here. Come with me. Let's have a look around heaven. Now you go off with Jesus. And we are going to dump our angel fudge. Ooh, stir this for a second because we need to dump this angel fudge into a dish that has been sprayed with some cooking spray. So we don't want it to stick. There we go. All right, so pull it off the burner there. And we're just going to dump it right in the pan. And then we're just going to refrigerate it. We're just going to let it cool. Because we're going to put it right in the fridge. This fudge comes out a lot like Tootsie Roll. Doesn't taste like it though, it tastes way better. Way better, but yeah, kind of the texture of Tootsie Roll. And it's kind of sticky. Sometimes we roll it. Huh. One thing's for sure, it's really good. <laughs> Thanks for working with us today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again. God bless.